Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service office in San Diego. The water year in the winter. Well, the water year starts October 1st. We usually look at the winter as December through February. Now we're in March, welcome to spring. We've had some weather extremes, dry and wet this winter. We're also gonna give you an outlook for the spring and summer coming up here in 2025. So uh, let's take a look at a few of the details. I took a look at some climate data. This is precipitation for this year. And I left up here last year and the year before. So uh, pretty remarkable how wet it was two years ago in a La Nina. That is the green in the middle. Last year with an El Nino, considerably wetter than what we've had this year. Uh, in some cases, double. Now we're not over with the water year, so we still can see precipitation, usually a storm or two late March uh, or April, and then even sometimes we get one in May. And don't forget the summer monsoon for the mountains. Let's take a look at some of those extremes this year. So we had fires, we had snow, and we had floods. I left up in this presentation last year's significant events of 2024. In case you missed it, uh, in the other presentations. We had several significant, including wet and wildfires. And of course, the reason why the wildfires are important is those cause problems and increased threats during our rating season, such as this past winter. How did our winter fare out? Well, December through February, our main outlook period, the traditional classic winter time was very dry, below the 50% for all of Southern California. And it was mild, especially in our interior mountains and deserts due to the lack of storms. However, we had one storm right before Valentine's Day that packed a punch. Five to six inches of water. And that water was only about 12 to 15 inches of snow. So very heavy wet snow above 7,000 feet. Now, Below that, here is the line burn scar, State Route Highway 330. Uh, these vehicles were unfortunately caught in a debris, mud, flash flood flow during the evening. In fact, Highway 330 has been closed up until recently with lots of repairs being done because of that burn scar and the runoff. Fortunately, no one was injured here. Now, what was the peak of the winter like? Well, the storms during the majority of our winter was going to our north and then dipping down across the Great Basin as shown here. So we had this big roadblock, one of them up in Alaska and another one in the Pacific, uh, keeping the storms well to our north and east. If you just focus on the heart of the winter, December through February, it was really even worse. So that blocking pattern was more centered on the West Coast, and then storms went up and over us and dove down across the Great Basin, as shown here. Kept it really cold for Central and Eastern United States and mild and dry for most of California. Precipitation since October 1st, uh, we're no longer in that dark brown shaded like we showed in earlier presentations back in February. We're now about 50% to a little bit higher, up around 70% of average for most of Southern California. Now, we're no longer first place in the ranking as well. So thanks to the precipitation in March especially, now we're in the top 10 for driest, but not the driest in a lot of our locations in far Southwest California. Now, our desert areas to the east, like Phoenix and Tucson, uh, they're still top five driest rainy season for the winter. Now, the snowfall started off really slow. Uh, we had almost no snowfall in December. We had a snowstorm in early January with a Santa Ana wind. Then we had a good snowstorm, moderate in February, two of them. And then we had the March snowfall, which dumped around three feet of snow, as shown here on the left-hand side. So our mountain areas, San Bernardino, San Gabriel's, ended up with about six feet of snow overall, still below average. San Diego Mountains, 12 to 24 inches of snow, really from two main storms. And it came very late in the year, of course, in March. How have the temperatures been since October 1st? Well, 
we can look at this water year as about average, but a little bit milder than average for the coast and the deserts due to the lack of storms. Colder than average in much of the Great Basin. If you look at the water year numbers, these are up to date through mid-March. You can see our desert areas and some of our mountains are still 25 to 50% of average, but there's a big chunk now that is up around 50 to just under 70% of average. So the cup is now about half full, but we're still missing four to five, six inches of precipitation along the coast and valleys and even in some of our mountain areas. Now the March was close to miracle. You can see the dark green shaded here, 150 to 200% of average. So almost two times, if not two times, a normal March occurred. Uh, one of the heavy events is shown here moving through San Diego uh, earlier in March. Now temperatures because of the storms, the clouds, precipitation, and the jet stream dropping down, bring that air from Canada and Alaska, temperatures were below average for Southern California for March. Here's a look at the latest U.S. drought monitor. Some improvement thanks to March across Southern California. Some of that D3 has been shaven, but still a large area covering Southern California of D2, D3 drought conditions. All this drought has developed since the fall of 2024. So when we entered the fall, all of Southern California was in the white. If you look at the weather pattern, there's the jet stream taking a dip. This is not one storm. This is multiple storms from early to mid-March. That roadblock in the Pacific shifted to the west, allowing the anomalously cooler air or the dip in the jet stream to be much more persistent, giving us that very wet March. The official outlook for April is calling for below average precipitation and warmer than average temperatures. Uh, that'll be the rule for the Southwest as a whole. Now in the spring, we typically do see a storm or two as mentioned, but if you look from April through June, it looks like we'll be right around average. So that means a storm or two into May. Um, June is typically one of our driest, if not the driest months before the monsoon. Temperatures in the spring running above average, not for the coast, but for our interior mountains and deserts, and especially for the southwest deserts and the east coast. If you look at the summer outlook, uh, this takes us from June all the way through August. Uh, upper level ridge stronger than usual in the Four Corners area. So, so dominant, it could suppress the monsoon initially just to the deep southwest in New Mexico and Arizona, a lot like last year. And warmer than average, maybe all the way to the coast, but certainly interior California, much warmer than average. Some resources for you. Uh, the arrows pointed to uh, water and precipitation resources where you can look back and see how much precipitation occurred. Now, if you're looking for alerts, it's weather.gov or weather.gov GIS. We also have detailed forecasts at the link towards the bottom. You'll find us on X and Facebook as well. Hope you enjoyed this update uh, for the winter and enjoy your spring. Happy spring and be safe, everyone out there.